Washington. Tonight, Texas News 5 Chief Correspondent Mike Snyder continues his series, JFK, The Final Chapter. And you say that you have found proof that a diversion plan was carried out. Unfortunately so, Jane. And I say unfortunately because many of us would consider it sad when those in government betray our trust. It's very sad. It is. Researchers, regardless of the subject, hunger for the paper trail to prove something happened. But the proof is even stronger when it comes in the words of those actually involved. And such is the case tonight. While the assassination was a brutal crime in itself, the real crime against the American way of life came after the killing. November 25th, 1963, the day our nation buried President John F. Kennedy, the same day it buried accused assassin Lee Harvey Oswald. And plans to bury the truth about both were already well underway. What we're about to show you for the first time anywhere is that the honorable men who sat here in Washington as members of the Warren Commission unwittingly got caught up in a cover-up. We've obtained secret documents the Warren Commission thought it had destroyed secret documents that show in the words of the Warren Commission members themselves their shock when they discovered their own investigation had been fixed, that the story had already been decided for them before they held even one public hearing. Uh, they began with the preconception of a lone assassin. They did not investigate the crime. They never intended to investigate the crime. For years, former Senate investigator Harold Weisberg tried to pry that alleged fact out of the official Warren Commission files. But deep in the National Archives, a January 22, 1964 executive session transcript that Weisberg believed contained proof of the stifled investigation was missing until he discovered this billing statement from the commission stenographer. It showed the court reporter did sit in on the meeting, and that led to this box in the archives containing the steno notes, which have now been transcribed for the first time. This once destroyed transcript proves the Warren Commission knew it had been had. Meeting late in the afternoon, Senator Richard Russell said, the FBI is very explicit that Oswald is the assassin or was the assassin and that they are very explicit that there was no conspiracy. Secondly, they have not run out all kinds of leads in Mexico or in Russia, but they're concluding that there can't be a conspiracy without those being run out. When the Chief Justice and I were just briefly reflecting on this, we said that if this was true and it ever came out, then you would have people think there was a conspiracy to accomplish this assassination. You are so right, said Congressman Hale Boggs. Oh, terrible, said Alan Dulles. Implications of this are fantastic, don't you think so, says Boggs. Terrific, says Senator Russell. The Warren Commission was under a lot of pressure to convince the public and the world that it was not a conspiracy. The pressure that came from this FBI report completed just hours after the assassination. As we showed you last night, a letter written just three days after the assassination from then Deputy Attorney General Nicholas Katzenbach to President Johnson's press secretary Bill Moyers said the FBI report could be used to convince the public Oswald was the assassin. They were terrified. They were scared. They knew they were boxed in. Uh, they knew that the FBI had leaked what they did not dare go against. And the transcript again offers proof. Senator Russell says the FBI would like to have us fold up and quit. This closes the case, you see. Don't you see, says Representative Boggs. Yes, I see that, says Dulles. Chief Counsel Lee Rankin says they found the man. There is nothing more to do. The commission supports their conclusions and we can go home and that's the end of it. Boggs, I don't even like to see this being taken down. And Dulles agrees, yes, I think this record should be destroyed. But now that record has been restored, and it stands as testimony to a crime by our government and those people we trust. And that, many say, left the Kennedy assassination unsolved. And you will have part three. The Texas News Channel. Now, Jane McGarry. Scott Murray on sports and meteorologist David Finfrock. Live, this is Texas News 5 at 10.
Good evening and thank you. Tonight, photographic evidence that some say may help prove there was a plot to assassinate President John Kennedy. For the past two nights, Texas News 5 Chief Correspondent Mike Snyder has uncovered secret documents he says could link top aides of President Johnson to a plan diverting the investigation of the assassination. Mike joins us once again tonight with part three of his series. Is the photographic evidence new? Well, not, uh, not really, Jane. Uh, quite to the contrary. In fact, the film we're about to show you and the folks at home was known to the FBI 28 years ago. And with the secret documents that we've shown you this week and a couple more we're going to show to you in just a couple of minutes, it will not take a leap of imagination to understand why this film was purposely ignored. In literature, a picture is worth a thousand words. In police work, it can be worth a conviction or acquittal. There were several home movies taken in Dallas the day President Kennedy was assassinated, and while they show the president being shot, the government said the films didn't show who was doing the shooting or from where. We've obtained a copy of an internal FBI memo dated November 25th, 1963. That's just three days after the assassination. It's a memo that disregards a film made in Dealey Plaza at the exact moment that President Kennedy was killed. It's a film that's never been shown before on television. It's a film that was never shown to the Warren Commission or to the House Select Committee. And it's a film some researchers claim could clear Lee Harvey Oswald. This is the home movie of the assassination filmed by Charles Bronson. But it is this footage just before the shooting that researchers say is important. Bronson offered his film to the FBI the night of the assassination, but three days later the FBI rejected it saying in this memo, films taken by Mr. Bronson failed to show the building from which the shots were fired. Both the Warren Commission and the FBI did not want pictures. Because former Senate investigator Harold Weisberg says the FBI report completed only hours after the assassination had already concluded Oswald was the lone gunman. In the secret Warren Commission transcript we showed you last night, Senator Richard Russell said the FBI would like to have us fold up and quit. Representative Hale Boggs responded, this closes the case, you see, don't you see? And that's why Weisberg says the FBI ignored the Bronson film. They began with the preconception. So why would they want evidence that they'd have to negate or work around? If you don't have it, you're much safer. But in 1978, Bronson offered his film to the House Select Committee on Assassinations. Optical consultant C.J. Leontes wrote the committee, that contrary to the 1963 FBI report, the Bronson film does show the area around the sixth floor window and is of superior quality. Bob Seltzer, the government's top photo analyst at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, wrote the committee, I would perhaps more strongly recommend computer processing of this film. This is the only possible evidence of movement behind the two closed windows adjacent to the half-open window on the sixth floor. Seltzer also contradicted the FBI analysis of the Bronson film, saying the school book depository sixth floor was clearly evident and well-defined. Assassinations Committee Chairman Lewis Stokes admitted in this January 8, 1979 report, the Bronson film is potentially significant because it may show movement by more than one person in the vicinity of the sixth floor southeast corner window from which Lee Harvey Oswald shot at the president. But Stokes also said, because the film was not made available to the committee's photographic evidence panel until December 2nd, 1978, the committee did not have funds available to authorize any sophisticated image enhancement analysis. But in fact, the government had the film available on November 22nd, 1963, 15 years earlier. So for the lack of money and time, says the House Assassinations Committee, it left the crime unsolved, failing to analyze the Bronson film, a film, Jane, that many researchers say and the chairman of the committee himself believe to be critical evidence in the Kennedy assassination. You were saying that there are 90 frames of this film. I, I think that's of what Of the book depository, the right. Bronson film shows 90 frames. The FBI said there wasn't any pictures of it in it. Is Mr. Bronson still alive? Is he willing to let the government analyze it now? He is still alive. In fact, we have talked to his Dallas uh, attorney, John Segalis, and he tells me that he wants and all he has ever wanted is for the government to analyze this film, show it to the best experts possible. He wants no money for this. He says he just wants the truth to come out. And the truth would be, of course, that if there are other people on the sixth floor of the school book depository just before the assassination, it could be the first proof that there was indeed a conspiracy.
to kill the President of the United States. Well, you've given us a lot to think about in your series, and I know that you will continue to follow this and see specifically what happens to this film. More now. to come, of course, when those files come out, and we expect them to the Bronx. Now, Gene McGarry, Scott Murray on sports, and meteorologist David Finfrock. Live, this is Texas News 5 at 6. Good evening and thank you very much for joining us tonight. The FBI tonight is launching a new probe into a rare film of the Kennedy assassination. This is the film the FBI ignored in 1963, but which we showed you for the first time last night on Texas News 5. Chief Correspondent Mike Snyder joins us now with more on this important development. Mike? Jane, this film could provide the first hard evidence of a conspiracy to kill President Kennedy back in 1963, but that is not our opinion. The value of the once ignored home movie shot by Charles Bronson has been judged by some of this nation's top photo analysts. And that's what has renewed the FBI's investigation tonight of the Kennedy assassination. November 22, 1963. Deadly sounds from the open mic of a Dallas motorcycle police officer. Home movie pictures by Charles Bronson at the exact moment President Kennedy was assassinated. Mr. Bronson offered his film to the FBI on the night of the assassination, but it was rejected three days later because the agent said in this memo films taken by Mr. Bronson failed to show the building from which the shots were fired. But the film did contain 92 frames of the school book depository just moments before the president's motorcade turned into Dealey Plaza. In 1978, the House Assassinations Committee asked the Jet Propulsion Laboratory to look at the Bronson film and photo expert Bob Seltzer strongly urged computer enhancement of the film because he said this is the only evidence of possible movement behind the two closed windows adjacent to the half-open window on the sixth floor. Committee Chairman Lewis Stokes admitted in his 1979 report the Bronson film is potentially significant because it may show movement by more than one person in the vicinity of the sixth floor southeast corner window from which Lee Harvey Oswald shot at the president. But Stokes said the film wasn't analyzed because the committee ran out of money. If I'd been sitting on that committee, I think I'd have found, I wouldn't have left any loose ends. But uh, uh, that was never referred to us uh, for follow-up. And, uh, uh, you know, frankly, I think it should have been. I think Dallas FBI agent in charge, Buck Ravel, also says he can't believe the FBI all the way back in 1963 didn't give the film a full analysis and says that's the reason he will now reopen the FBI investigation to consider the film's new evidence. Well, if, if the film is made available, then we will send it back for careful examination under today's capabilities, uh, including uh, the best available technology. And we'll see if there's any additional information that can be gleaned from it, and then we'll send it to the Justice Department as we have all of you. And Buck Ravel says if, in fact, analysis by photo experts shows more than just Lee Harvey Oswald on the sixth floor of the school book depository, to use his words, it certainly would change the findings of the Warren Commission. And Jane, in short, it would be the first hard evidence to prove a conspiracy, but it could also do another thing. It could also exonerate Lee Harvey Oswald as what he said he was, a patsy. It's a fascinating. The implications of it are really enormous. What happens next, Mike? What, when does the FBI analyze this? You've been talking with them all day today. Right. Well, the FBI this afternoon met with John Segalis, who is Bronson's attorney, and an arrangement has been made now to have an FBI agent go and get the tape. The tape will then be forwarded to Washington to some of this nation's top photo analysts, and they will then begin looking at that film frame by frame to see if indeed there was somebody else on the sixth floor of the school book depository the day that Lee Harvey Oswald was accused of shooting President Kennedy in Dealey Plaza. Okay. 